Welcome to Geography 485 585L Internet Mapping, Module 2.2, Web-Based Mapping Clients, the Google Maps API, Part 2, Related Topics. This week we will be looking at some additional capabilities of the Google Maps API as we will be viewing some uh, online videos produced by the Google Maps team introducing two concepts related to Google Maps to enhance them. One is a video that talks about styling of the base maps with custom styles that you define. And the other relates to the use of Google's Fusion Tables as an alternative data source to feed into your Google Maps applications. Finally, I will do a quick overview of a complete internet mapping application based on Google Maps API that is more akin to what you would see in a real world sort of scenario. Let's start with the, uh, the video introduction to styled maps, the link for which is provided in the lecture notes and is available um, online for the class. As a part of this page, there are also links to the documentation for how to use styled maps within Google Maps API, and also a link to the styled maps wizard, which is uh, the focus of the video that you'll want to watch. As an example of a styled map, we have here um, the code for a very simple Google Maps using a set of simple styles. Let's go to the map itself. You can see in this map that it does not uh, any longer look like the default uh, visual style of the Google Maps base map. And instead, I have developed a set of custom styles that are particularly focused on uh, providing visual emphasis for points of interest. Let's take a look at the source code for this so that you can see what these styles look like in the web page that this simple map is based upon. So if we just look at the page source, You'll be able to see that this is a standard HTML document, which again for um, illustration purposes includes all of the styling information um, as a part of the web page. Um, it also includes the reference to the Google Maps API. And then you begin to see the block of JavaScript that is associated with the initialization of the Google Map itself in terms of the initialize function, defining a variable for essentially a latitude longitude that I want to use to, uh, to center the map. I'm defining a variable for the various map options that I want to define. Um, as a part of that, I have actually defined a set of styles. So this block of code right here is essentially the set of styles that I am going to apply to the map that I'm going to create, which in this case, as you can see just above the text that I have selected, is a roadmap uh, map ID. In the styles, you can see I have defined styles for a number of feature types within the base map for the roadmap. Those include water here, roads of type highway, roads of type arterial, roads of type local, administrative boundaries, and two different feature types for points of interest essentially two different stylers. And for each of those, I'm then defining whether or not that particular um, feature type is visible. 
and also specifying the particular colors that I would like to use. So that's the case of this hue specification here for the highways and the hue here for water and all of my other features. You can see I have also specified that the visibility for the arterial roads is simplified so that we only see essentially the high level arterial roads. We do not see um, as much detail um, in those roads. Um, we're turning the local roads off as we don't want to actually have those displayed at all. We, we're looking for simplified administrative boundaries and then also um, setting our, uh, our point of interest styles. These are styles actually that were built using the style wizard that is demonstrated in the Google Maps uh, video. And we finally just create our map object linking it to our map canvas div in our HTML. With the exception of this new style element that we're setting in the options we're using to create our map object, other than that, it's pretty much the same as the other Google Map examples that you've already had a chance to see. The next item that, that I'd like you to take a look at relates to Fusion Tables, which is another Google technology that allows you to essentially store tabular data in um, on Google servers, and you can link the, that tabular data with spatial data. So you can use fusion tables um, uh, directly by entering, say, names and addresses, and you can use the geocoding capabilities of fusion tables to actually allow Google to convert those addresses to approximate geographic locations. Um, you can also import uh, external uh, KML files, keyhole markup language, which we will talk about as an open standard in a couple of weeks. Um, you can import KML files as external geographic data sources that you can bring into uh, your fusion tables to do mapping from. The key thing with fusion tables is that they provide a, uh, a nice web interface for being able to ma manage attributes in a tabular form but then also provide some very quick and easy mapping capabilities within the Fusion Tables system. And finally, there's the ability through the Google Maps API to add Fusion Table layers to your maps. So you can actually use um, data that you're storing in that tabular environment as a part of your, your Google Map. An example of that type of application is the NAWRS NARS.net site that um, I demonstrated in class last week and that we had the link from last week's slides in. Finally, I would like to conclude with an overview of um, a complete website or web page that, that brings together a lot of these concepts that we've been talking about in a more, uh, more complicated and um, more consistently structured approach along the lines of what I have been recommending in terms of the separation of your structure, your presentation and behavior into separate files and the, the um, implementation of some of the more advanced features of the Google Maps API in terms of being able to um, add markers and then adding um, info uh, boxes to those markers. The code is available here in the lecture notes and I will now uh, demonstrate the site and walk through some of the features of the site as an illustration of some things that you might look for or contemplate as you're looking forward to uh, developing your more sophisticated uh, Google Maps applications. This is a web page that I've developed that allows me to map the various um, locations that I've been to since 2008 
as either a participant or a coach or other endurance events that I've participated in since I joined the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society's team in training. And this is um, a, a combination of information that I'm trying to provide. So you can see here there's a little bit of information at the top of the screen. If I scroll down, there are additional uh, uh, blocks of content, which as you can see are still uh, not complete, but um, you can see where the placeholders are for the text that I will eventually add about each one of those events. And in each case, there's, uh, except for one, there's a link to a map location that corresponds to um, where that event took place. So that I have a standard Google map here that I can zoom in and out of and I can pan around on. But I also have then code in the page so I can, for example, click on this link to the um, approximate map for the Disneyland Half Marathon last year, and it will automatically zoom the map centered on the city of Anaheim and show the route map that I have stored in a Google Fusion table. And I can do that for other events and maps as well, as here we zoomed to Orlando, and you can see here the approximate route locations for uh, the events that, that um, took place in Orlando. So this is an example of how you can provide interaction between your web content area and the map itself and provide an interaction and linkage between those uh, components of your site. So now that we've seen this, let's take a look at the code and highlight some of the characteristics that you may want to keep an eye out for as examples of how you may want to continue to develop your sites or um, as ideas for um, uh, features that you might want to use. So if I view the page source, I'm here looking at the HTML document, which in this case is following that best practice that I've suggested earlier where you can see that I am linking to an external style sheet. In this case, it's a style sheet that is stored in, the fo in a folder called styles um, at the same level as this HTML document. I have the link to the Google Maps API JavaScript, which of course is a requirement for um, the Google Maps capabilities to work. And I have a link to an external JavaScript file called base.js that is in a directory called JS at the same level as the HTML document that we're looking at here. I do have an extra block of JavaScript here that is defining information that I, I conceptualized as being more local to this particular uh, application. And in that respect, I was separating this information for the particular map points that I want to define for this map, independent of the JavaScript that I wrote that is stored externally that has more gen gen general purpose functionality. Um, I could have actually written a second external JavaScript file and referenced that as well. But in this case, I embedded it in the head of the document. As we move down to the body of the document, you can see this is where I actually now have the content, where the body tag begins here. And then I just basically have my level one headings. I have um, my paragraphs for the text that I have at the, at the top. I define here my, the div element that I'm going to then add the um, map to using the JavaScript. And then I have um, this set of elements for each of the events. So I'm essentially using a level two header for the information for each event and then a paragraph under each one where I have my currently non-existent blah, blah, blah 
um, information describing each of those events. So you could think of each of these as a block of content for each of the events that I have added to the system. And what I have done is added a function to each one of these that, uh, that is handling the recentering of the map where I have attached those directly to an on-click event for the paragraph. So essentially, if you, or to the link, I should say. So if you click on that, what it's going to do is um, basically uh, recenter the map um, to that particular location as defined by that, um, that JavaScript array up above that I have defined. And I also then define here the zoom level. So this recenter function is a Google Maps function that includes a reference to the map, the reference to the location that I want to recenter to, and the zoom level. Okay? And then I just repeat that for each one of the elements that I want to display content for. Let's now take a look at our style sheet. I can click on the style sheet and you can see in this instance that the style sheet is very simple and all I have done is basically um, define uh, some modifications to the default um, background color and font for the page in the body element here. I've defined a style specifically for the event map div, uh, specifying what its width within the page should be and its specific height in the number of pixels. So this is defining the size of the map on my page. And then I've done some additional tweaking of the, the content in the page for the level one headers, the level two headers, the anchor elements, and then any instances where I use the date and time classes, I have defined a style for those classes where those should be displayed in italics. If we go back to the page, you can see those as they appear in, the, in each of the entries where you can see the date is in italics and the time is in italics. And if we view the source for that page, you can see I've used a span element to assign the, cl the date class to the date and the time class to the, the um, time element, all as a part of the H2 element that those are embedded within. So these are just a couple of ways you can think about modifying styles within your page. Let's now take a look at the JavaScript. So this JavaScript um, is longer and more complex than the JavaScript that we've been looking at before because it is doing a couple of um, somewhat different things. Um, I'm, uh, and I've tried to document it so that it's a little bit easier for you to read through later if you'd like to. Um, up at the top of the JavaScript, I've defined a set of global variables. These are variables that I want to have access to throughout all the rest of my JavaScript. I'm then defining a set of functions. That initialize function that you're already familiar with is, is the one that I'm defining here. Um, this info window object is part of uh, the process of being able to develop a, a looping structure for generating markers and info windows that I'll talk about very briefly in a few minutes. This is probably a, a, a moderate level of complexity in terms of the JavaScript code. We're going to set the map center to that global variable that I set above as US center. I'm going to create a variable where I define my map styles that I can then apply and use later when I do the initial map setup. I'm now creating my map options variable 
that is actually using some of those variables that were set above um, in terms of the center is being set to map center here. The map type ID is set to map type, another global variable that I set above. Um, and the styles are set to the map styles variable that I defined up above. So this is a way of being able to um, compartmentalize some of the elements that I'm using in defining the page and defining the map. Finally, I initialize the map object itself with this single one line command where again, I'm referring to that element, that div element that I want the map to be uh, input into. And then I'm just specifying the name of the variable map options where all of the map options should be read from. Then I'm executing two more functions. So this is a way of, again, compartmentalizing your JavaScript to make it a little bit more manageable um, and, and, uh, and separating out some of the blocks of functionality. First, I have this build markers function, which I define that down here. So here I have function build mar markers, where in this case I'm passing to that function two variables, our, our map object. So um, basically I'm saying, I'm, I'm making that map object available by name in this function, and I'm passing into it the um, list of markers or sites that I, that, I, um, that I actually defined in my HTML page. So what I'm doing here is I'm actually looping through all of the items in that event places JavaScript array that I, that I created on the, on the index page. So if I go back here, I remember on the HTML document, I created this variable called event places, where it has a block of name value pairs created for each of the locations that I want to be able to map. As I look at my JavaScript here, essentially what I'm doing is reading, I'm looping through those event places elements and for each of them, I'm going to create a new marker. That's what this my marker is, where I'm defining its position based on the point that's defined in event places. I'm setting the title to the name, the map to the map object that we passed in, and this new variable or, or attribute called HTML that we're basically setting it to the label element of that event places. If we look back at event places, you'll see that each one of these elements has a name, Albuquerque in this case, a point, which is defined as a new a Google Maps latitude longitude point, and a label, which has another text string. And those are the values that I'm referring to here, where this is the reference to that point, this is the reference to the name, and this is the reference to the label for each of those, those um, event place items as we loop through this list, where this loop is defined through reference to this I variable. So this is something you'll see in a lot of JavaScript and many programming languages in general is this concept of looping and being able to do the same thing um, through each loop of, of a particular program. So we're defining our markers. We're then going to um, uh, create a, a, a text string that's basically based on this event places label, the same thing that we, um, we actually have just assigned to our marker in terms of the HTML document. And then we're going to need to add an event listener. This is something that you'll encounter when you need to add info windows to your documents, where we're gonna add an event listener so that when you click on a marker, that's the reference here. So when you click on my marker, you can see the event we're capturing is click. 
we want to execute this anonymous function that is going to do two things. It's going to define the content of the info window that's going to be um, that that will be shown as um, this.html. So it's going to define the content as being the HTML value for the marker. So that's why we're, we're so we're using this value here. And then we're going to open that window, that info window in the map object. And that's basically a very compact way to be able to go through a series of objects that you want to add um, combined markers and info windows to. If we go back to our initialize function, you can see we also have an add fusion table function. So I, in this case, I actually have that as a separate function as opposed to being uh, embedded in the initialize function. And we can see here is that add fusion table. And it's a very simple function that basically defines a new fusion table layer. You can see we're creating a new layer called event routes. And we're defining it as a new google.maps.fusion tables layer. We're adding the necessary syntax here to basically select the column from that fusion table that contains the essentially the route geometries, the information that would be mapped, and then specifying in this case the numeric identifier for that fusion table so that uh, Google can actually access the fusion table and find the information. And then we're just adding that event routes layer to our map. Finally, you saw that recenter function earlier. If we go back to the source code on our HTML page, you'll see again that we have this recenter function that we assigned to each one of the, uh, the entries as a part of the on click event. So this is a function that I've defined that will recenter the map based on the information provided in that recenter function. So you'll see that three items are provided again. What map should be recentered? In this case, it's the one map we have, the, the called map. It's going to define the XY coordinates that it should use for recentering the map. And in this case, it's pulling it out of that array of values that we define up above earlier in the page. And we define the zoom level. So we can define the zoom at the level of each time we want to recenter the map so we can tune it up for a particular event and map. If we go back to our JavaScript, you can see that this recenter function is just a very simple, uh, basically four line function where the function name is recenter. It's expecting to get three values provided to it, the map that it should act on, the XY coordinates that should be uh, used, and the zoom level that should be used. We then execute two Google Maps functions on existing on the existing map object, which we passed in by name. It was called map. And since I have my map here as the variable name that I should use to represent the object that was passed in, we're using that name here, my map. And then we're using the set center function to define the center as the my place value. That's the value that's passed in when that function is called. Similarly, we're then executing for the my map object, the Google Maps API set zoom function using the my zoom value that's passed in as a part of the, um, the function call from the home page. So you've seen here that in just a few hundred lines of JavaScript code, and even fewer of that, of uh, you know, 181 lines of HTML, and a very small amount of cascading style sheets, we've been able to develop a page 
that actually has quite a bit of functionality uh, embedded in it. And it's a, it's a good foundation to start from for adding additional information, adding new sites and events as we look forward through time. Hopefully this has illustrated some of the more complex capabilities that you can take advantage of in Google Maps. Um, though, as, as you might expect, with the short introduction that we have here, we're still just scratching the surface of this platform for providing interactive mapping.